Welcome back to my channel where I'm building a reduplicator, a remix of my Wanhao duplicator i3 with the reduplicator project from GitHub and Thingiverse. Now we're starting to get to actually building. Um, this section will cover the uh, section three, building the base from the project's wiki. And that's where we'll take most of this extrusion and some of the parts and create the foundation of the three printer. Let's get started. So for the base, we need to start with the extrusions. Uh, let's see. The 258 one, I think is the one I have out here. Uh, 25. Oh, 258, this will be the front. <clears throat> and the 350. That's what this one is here. Hang on. So what we're doing is joining them like so, uh, and then we'll have another part uh, to go along with it. And we use one of the first pieces I printed, which are corner pieces uh, that will be feet. They have this Misumi reinforcement there uh, and the T-nuts. These are all hex. Uh, I will use this tool for most of the video. Let's see, what is it? What does it say on it? It says H3. I think uh, these are M5 bolts, but they have an M3 style head. I don't know. Rambling. Um, I'm not going to make these too loose, but also, you know, not too too tight. Um, these need to slide uh, conveniently in. These need to slide uh, freely through the extrusion. So um, since they're all identical, I'll just pick one. And see, it's too tight uh, as it as it stands. So I'll just back it off a little. The reason I don't want to make it too uh, short is. Uh, then it won't um, there we go nope needs a little bit more back off keep on going There we go. I guess if uh, first you don't succeed, try rotating. <laughs> now we'll take this beam and do the same. Different parts of this particular piece uh, have different tolerances, or, or I think they do. Really helps to get this head on. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't slide that easily. Boom. So that is going to make, will become the front in a few minutes. All right, what's next? Uh, check the square. Oh, check there. There's square and tightening. This is where our squares will start to come in. Um, and so I have two types of squares. Figure, might as well use them both. This looks pretty good, actually. So I'm going to do finger tight, uh, very light, not even full finger tight, because I want this edge to be nice, um, nice and flush. Okay. Yeah, see, it's still it's still moving. Um, get this out of the way. See now by sandwiching between the two, 
I have a crisp edge and uh, also an aesthetically clean edge. So I'll just go tighten this um, all the way. That should be nice and right angle. Uh, previously I was doing some test fitting and I found I had to really tighten it. Um, these tools have a hole in them and I've always wondered what they were until someone showed me uh, there to give you more leverage. So I can insert that here and give it a nice tight twist. Oof. Try not to scratch up the bottom of this because I have a bunch of junk on my desk. Um, that's pretty, pretty good. Excellent. Um, so the other components that we will be placing here are the um, Masumi uh, corner pieces. And this is where drop-in T-nuts really come, into, uh, come up. We're going to put these i put these Misuni uh, corner pieces. Uh, the drop-in T-nuts really uh, are handy here because I can put them in uh, and you can s probably can't see, but it's, ooh, probably can't see, but they're still straight. So all we need to do is use uh, something, probably can't see, but um, yeah, I don't know. You can just rotate, straighten it out. Um, with something not as massive as that uh, to guide it straight. So just the small screwdrivers will do. I don't know if that helps. Um, and then we tighten it. We don't have to worry about this um, changing the right angle because we made sure that was nice and square. And I'll do the same. Yep. Once you get it mostly uh, perpendicular to the opening, it's pretty easy. And I'll use that same technique again to tighten it like so. Ooh. Righty tighty? Yeah, that's right. Man, this is solid. All right, let's get to the next one. <laughs> okay. I believe the front of the frame, ah, oh, cool. It's already, I can see the full 3D printer here, um, despite the fact that it's just a few pieces of extrusion. Uh, cool. Here's the guide. So, I want to keep this as scratch free as possible for as long as possible. And I'd say that's how this photo looks. Um, so we're caught up there. The next step, it says, loosely connect the 380 millimeter Extrusion across the bottom with two corner nuts. Brackets. All right. Um, Okay, so next attach the remaining 258 millimeter beam with the feet. Using, all right. So let's do that. Let's get her going. Where is my tool? Okay. 
You probably saw it there all along, didn't you? <laughs> it says, uh, install the Y-axis idler to the front. To you. Um, uh, some T-nuts. How does this get installed? That is how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to take the heat insert and go for it. At 400 degrees, it's a little bit more forgiving um, than other than you would expect. Um, but just to be safe, yeah, that looks like where it's supposed to go. Uh, well, here's to hoping. Yeah, that wasn't it far enough in. Yeah, I can keep on doing this a few more times. about right. Nice and flush. The second one. So you really have to get it like 90, 95% in. Let me grab M3s just to be sure. Um, oh yeah. It creates a little bit of um, plastic on the inside, but I think a quick uh, Turn. Can't fix. Just push it right out. Yeah, do it by hand even. Well, what do you say? This was. I think this should be a lot easier to get on. Yeah, let's just wrap it like that. Here's the y-axis. Uh, and then here's the motor mount. Fascinating. No, yeah, that's right. Wow, this looks completely different. Uh, 
Actually, this fits way better. I'm wondering if there's a difference in these tolerances. I don't know if you can see this, but the design is slightly different. Um, this is a little bit of a oh, bigger gap and a hook. I'm going to file this down a little bit more. Tools back in order. Well, that worked out perfectly. All right. So we got the y-axis idler in place. Um, pretty centered. Uh, I might have to adjust that later. Uh, let me find that lost T-nut. While we're, while we're here. Well, ah, there it is. Um, Cause the last piece we need to do is, this is odd. I'm still unsure why it's not balanced. In any case, front. Um, in any case, let's get the uh, the motor mount on there. That's nice and rigid. Kind of looks like that. You know, I might as well complete the idler. I have them both. For the for this idler, the size doesn't matter so much. Um, this is actually pretty fun. It's just fine. Um, but for the X axis, the design is significantly different. So, ah, was M8. The rare times I get to use this giant set. I never use these. But now it's perfect. Okay. I'm gonna keep this bolt somewhere. I'll put it in the main box. Great. So install the uh Complete the idler using a 30 to 35 millimeter M5 screw. Did I just buy that? That'd be cool. Um, let's go back to my bomb list. The uh, M5. I just bought it. From my local hardware store. One is the M5. Yeah, I think it's this one. And it says, uh, complete the idler using an M5, M5 washers, uh, stock or thinner aftermarket pulleys, and an M5 Nylock. So, ooh, that is fascinating. Well, that's, this won't fit. <laughs> I, I need a right angle. Which, this would have been easier to, ins to install uh, earlier. I realize this now.
You know, I'm gonna leave this without washers and we'll see, we'll see how that goes. I have the, um, I have these kind of rubbery washers. Hey, you know what? Let's throw two on there. Well, that's not a rip back bag. Tweezers, tweezers. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you keep these. It is a very tight fit. I'm gonna flip it over one more time. Maybe you can see more of it. It's not that tight. What I should have done is, uh, has fitted this first. There's room for both washers. Or really the need. Let's see what happens when. I think if I were to use the thinner pulley, it would make sense to, to use the washers. Get out of there. But for now, I'm gonna try without. You know I have it. I mean, these do compress a little bit more than standard washers because they're rubbery, plasticky thing. In the meantime, Let's get this in there and move on. So many tweezers. It's curious to see um, the evolution of the design because uh, Om Nom Namagon uh, refined it quite a bit. There's a lot of iterations on, on GitHub and you can see the ways he changed uh, inserting things and lining up with the extrusions. Well, we're out of runaway here for that lock nut.
Zen 5, 30, and this is M5, 30, 35. Hmm. Hopefully I got enough space. All right, switch over to, nope, still. Yeah, that's not long enough. All right, well. I'm calling that done for now. <laughs> so there you have it. We have something of a base. It uh, certainly had trials and tribulations and overheated cell phone camera shut off problems, but uh, for a start, it looks like a pretty sturdy base. I think I have to go buy, back and buy some more parts and it'll be good enough to continue on. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.